Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our bi-monthly caucus meeting. Um, if you... This is why I love technology. <laughs> Oh, there it did. Did it unmute? Yeah. No, it changed the the view. Yeah, it didn't unmute though. I think changed the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not gonna be unmuted. This. Computer. Oh, the okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our bi-monthly community meeting where we discuss issues, questions, comments, and concerns. Um, just a FYI, a little bit of housekeeping. Please follow us at Everything Water F on all social media platforms. The website is actually up and running. Um, if you have anyone that wants to volunteer, that wants to help out, please fill out the volunteer form and please be engaged because this is a process that's going to take everybody. We can't do it alone, although we're doing a great job. It is better and it's easier when all participates and when all hands are on deck. So please share the website and all social media pages with your neighbors, family, and your friends. Without further ado, we will begin tonight's meeting. Tonight's meeting is going to focus predominantly on public safety questions, comments, and concerns. We have the captains from the West District here with us today. We also have the community liaison from the South District on via Zoom as well. But before we get into those issues, we will uh, turn it over to Via. Via, as many of you know, is the purple vans that ride around Jersey City. Um, so without further ado, we will turn it over to them and they will let you know what they've been doing, how's ridership, um, possible employment opportunities and things of that nature. So at this point, I will turn it over to the personnel from Via to discuss those things. Thanks, Councilman Gilmore. Hi, everyone. Um, great to see you all here today and virtually. Um, before we get started, would love a uh, kind of show of hands. How many of you uh, have heard of VIA? Great. It looks like everyone. How many of you have actually ridden with VIA? Okay. Couple of hands. Um, do any of you currently drive with VIA? No? Okay. Great. Um, so we'll have a few topics to go through today, and we'll also be talking about potential opportunities um, to drive with VIA. Um, so without further ado, we can move um, ahead maybe two slides, um, if that's OK, Erica. So just as a quick introduction, my name is Ria Shah. I'm the general manager for the VIA Jersey City Service. Great. Thank you, Ria. Uh, I'm Sriram, and I lead uh, driver operations, particularly hiring uh, for services like the, the VIA Jersey City Service. Mike, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Manzel. I'm the Director of Transportation for the City of Jersey City, and I uh, help manage the VIA contract for the city. Great. Um, so as a quick overview, I know most of you said that um, you're already familiar with, with VIA, but um, just to recap what the... The model of Via Jersey City is that it's essentially like a bus um, that comes almost to you. Um, so Via will, um, you'll be able to request a Via ride on your phone, uh, or on an app or over the phone by calling. And then the app will essentially pair you with other riders who are moving in the same direction as you. So it's very normal when you when a VIA shows up that there might already be riders on board, or as you're driving along, you may pick up or drop off other people, much like you would on the bus. Um, ideally, um, it shouldn't add too much time to your journey, but as you're going along, we're essentially matching riders with the best vehicle for the journey um, that you and the other riders are going on within the city. 
Um, and then the last piece is that it's not going to necessarily come directly outside your door. You might need to walk a block or two to what we call a virtual bus stop that makes the most sense for your pickup or your drop off as well. So if we move to the next slide. Great. So jumping into service overview. What you see here is um, the map of Jersey City that we all know and love, but we've broken it into two pieces. What you see here is the purple central zone, and you see a blue outer zone. Um, so how Via Jersey City works is that you can travel anywhere within the blue zone. Um, you can go to and from the blue zone. But if you're in the purple zone, the central zone, you can only go to the outer zone. Um, the reason behind this is that downtown Jersey City has a lot of um, transit options already, um, and we want to make sure that we're providing ample service to the, the outer zone that we're sitting in right now. Um, so you can take a ride within the central zone, um, but you can go back and forth between um, the blue and the purple or within the blue. Um, Service hours run Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. On Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. There's currently no service on Sundays. Um, the rides are $2 flat if you're going, um, if your trip touches the purple area, $2 flat. If you're going within the blue area, it's $2 flat plus 50 cents a mile. Um, and on average, most riders are paying around $2.30. Um, so pretty much on par with, with the NG Transit bus, for example. Um, you can pay through credit or debit card, but we're currently working right now on ways that you can pay with cash as well, um, if that's easier for you. Um, and then finally, you can book a ride either by using the VIA app, which you can get through the App Store on your Android or your iPhone, or, and I recommend saving this number in your contacts that you see up here, 201-514-6637. Um, and you can call and speak to a member of our call center team to have them book a ride for you. Any questions on the kind of service overall and, and how it works? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, if you, um, if you have a question, if you can come up um, just to the podium Hey, there's the mic right there. Yes, hi. My question is, because I used to take VIA quite often, and um, my problems were that I live the first house off the corner of Martin Luther King Drive, and I would call. They would tell me they would pick me up, and I know to go to the corner. I'd get to the corner, and then they text me that my pickup is on Bergen and, and Wilkinson Avenue. And I'm like, but that's not what they told me. And I can't walk. I'm, I got a cane. I couldn't walk there that for, in two minutes. Can't do that. And that has happened to me quite a few times. That's why I stopped taking it. You know, and I couldn't understand why. I would call back. And they'd say, okay, well, we got to send somebody else, but it's such and such a time. And I'm going to appointments. You know, so I, I, I just stopped taking it. I totally hear you. And I know that that can be difficult, especially um, when you have, um, when it's difficult to, to walk to meet the, the buses. So what we've done is, um, I'm happy to, after um, we finish this, I'll take down your information and I can actually update your profile for mobility impaired riders. We can actually provide what we call curb to curb service. Um, so the next time you request a ride, it'll come just to your home at the you know the corner of Martin Luther um, versus you needing to walk the couple of blocks. So I can update your profile for you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And then it should be that same pickup every time just outside um, where you've requested. And then it'll drop you off right at where you put down as your destination where your appointment is. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And if that applies to anyone else in the room or on the Zoom, um, please do feel free to reach out. So for those in the room, I'm happy to take down your information and help to update your profile. But for those on the Zoom, please do feel free to call in to support. Um, if you're a senior citizen or have another form of mobility impairment, um, our call center team can update your profile to ensure that you get curb to curb service. Yes, and if, if, if anyone have a, a question, comment, concern, 
on the Zoom, you can raise your hand as well because in person we can actually see the hands, but on Zoom, you have to hit the little emoji icon. Um, so we, we want to make sure we're paying you attention as well. Go okay, ahead, young lady. Great, thank you. We can. I think we might have a question actually. We do. Oh, nope, that's no, from America. Think, yes. Great. Awesome. We can move to the next slide. Um, great. So this is just a little bit more information about how to get set up with the app, um, which is we definitely recommend using the app if you um, have a smartphone. It's definitely going to be a little bit faster than needing to explain to someone over the phone, um, you know, validating your account information, providing your um, address, all of those sorts of things you definitely can do over the phone, but always easier to self-service, I think. So um, once you download the free VIA app, you're just going to add in your name, email, and phone number to set up your account, add in your payment information, and then all you need to do is enter a pickup and drop off information. And again, I'm happy to troubleshoot anyone's apps with them in the room, um, show you how to request a ride. Service is running right now, so we can practice together. So definitely please do let me know, and, and I'm happy to help. From there, the app will tell you um, when the driver is expected to arrive. On average, our ETAs are around 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so we recommend planning a little bit in advance. Um, it's not going to be quite as fast as you know an Uber, if you will, of you know five minutes. But usually within 15 to 20 minutes, um, you'll be able to see your driver on the map moving closer to you. Um, and then you'll be able to meet him or her for your ride. You'll also be able to see... Um, the license plate so you can match up um, and make sure that you're getting into the right van as well, though that purple color definitely helps too. Great, and I already mentioned a little bit of this, but first we do have um, dedicated wheelchair accessible vans. So if you're in a wheelchair, um, we do have vans um, that will meet your needs. Um, you can book over the phone if you don't have a smartphone or aren't comfortable using one. Um, we do provide that door-to-door -door option that I mentioned. Um, if you have limited mobility or some other restriction that makes it difficult for you to walk and meet your driver. Um, and then finally, we are compatible with both iOS and Android. If we want to go to the next slide, I'll turn it over to Shriram to talk about um, opportunities to drive with us. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, uh, as I was, uh, you know, discussing with a few folks outside, uh, we launched this service in February 2020, uh, just before the pandemic. And we have seen a lot of growth in that period of time. Uh, as our service has grown, we have, you know, added more vehicles, we have uh, recruited more drivers, and the service continues to grow. You know, we continue to see lots of demand. And um, we are always on the lookout for, uh, you know, drivers who can provide great customer service, who have a safe record of driving, who are really interested in serving the community. Uh, and today, uh, we really wanted to come and talk about the opportunity to drive for VIA. Uh, so, so what I mentioned was, you know, this is sort of what we are looking for, you know, great customer service, safe uh, driving record are looking to serve the community, but in turn, we also want to reward, you know, drivers who sort of meet those criteria. Uh, we want to offer competitive pay and, and incentives. Uh, we want to offer drivers uh, an opportunity that gives them flexibility, uh, that gives them independence. Uh, we, we provide really great customer support. We also have um, sort of like a, a dedicated presence within Jersey City itself if drivers have concerns or questions. Uh, and we want to make sure that the experience and opportunity driving for VIA is safe. You know, we have uh, cameras in every vehicle that face inward and outward. Uh, we have, you know, customer service teams that take, you know, any complaints around safety very seriously. So this is sort of what we offer drivers in return. And uh, I think the main benefit that we see is sort of like stable and predictable earnings. So unlike, you know, when you compare... Uh, driving for VIA with some other sort of opportunities like uh, DoorDash or Uber, we actually provide, you know, guaranteed earnings by the hour. So if you drive for VIA, you know, 10 hours tomorrow, you know exactly how much you're going to make. And you can actually sign up for, you know, driving 10 hours, 20 hours a week in advance. So next week, if we sort of like release the schedule and you, you sign up to drive 40 hours and you know how much you're going to make over those 40 hours, that gives you a lot of predictability and stability. 
Uh, and that's really what we're trying to offer. So it doesn't matter if you know the vehicles are full or empty, if you have done two rides or 10 rides, uh, we are there to provide a predictable earnings opportunity for you. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Um, Looking, seeing no hands. Um, did you see something else in the chat? Okay. Okay. Um, do do we have uh, the data on ridership of ward specific? That's a great question. I think what? Uh, we can certainly provide that information. Um, we look at that on a quarterly, quarterly basis. Quarterly. Yeah. <clears throat> again for um for the last quarter for the la okay yeah. we could provide it for the for the previous quarter though yes um in general there's record demand uh across the city um we're averaging close to twelve thousand rides a week is that right um twenty five thousand requests come through every week yeah oh wow it's a very popular <laughs> service um and and we you know the, the jersey city team we we really uh review all of the metrics with the via team on a weekly basis to make sure that we're meeting all of the the residents needs and uh look for ways to improve whenever we can so we can definitely share some information okay cool I we have, have a question. question testing one two um i often i live um near where via's parking lot is i guess you could say off of Gar garfield um is the goal to have all those cars on the road are like those Jersey City cars? Not always. Um, so we essentially maintain a bigger fleet. Um, so we have about 50 vehicles in the fleet, but are targeting putting about 40 on the road on any given day at a maximum. Given that vehicles will go in and out of service, will have maintenance issues, needed to do preventative maintenance, those sorts of things, we do have slightly more vehicles that you might see parked in the lot than, um, than you would envision. But we are putting about 40 vehicles on the road per day. And then from a scheduling perspective, you also might see more vehicles sitting at the lot than you would expect. So for instance, we... Um, sequence having drivers go out on the road we have some start right at 6 a.m when service starts 7 a.m 8 a.m 10 a.m etc um, to ensure that we're essentially mirroring our the number of vans that we have on the road with what we're seeing demand patterns look like we don't need all of our vans on the road right at 6 a.m just as an example um i i i, I drive i take via often i used to take Ubers often, but I love Via. I love the concept. It's it's affordable, um, but I am looking forward to seeing the wait time come down because oftentimes, especially if I'm in a rush or have to be at work at a certain time, I have to resort to taking an Uber because I know they'll be here within minutes versus having to wait 20 minutes sometimes for Via. So I'm looking forward to you guys hiring more people and putting more cars on the road. Um, with that said, I'd like to see um, more aggressive a more aggressive push to get local drivers who know the city and know the roads. Um, and with that said, I, I wanted to know if you were hosting any type of job fair soon. And then also, do you help people um, regain their driving privileges if they're having issues there? Um, is there any type of special offerings that you might help a Jersey City resident become via driver? Yeah, great question. How about we just maybe take it into pieces. I think, Mike, do you want to first take the, the, the concern around ETAs? Yeah. Um, you know, this is something we review, again, like I said, on a weekly basis with VIA uh, to see where the metrics stand. There's a number of things we're looking at doing, experimenting with maybe capping the total ETA. So if you're taking a really long trip across the city, maybe you don't get a proposal for a VIA trip um, in, in that way to try and maximize kind of the efficiency of the vehicles that are on the road. So those are just like some tweaks we're looking at, ex at experimenting with. In general, though, we have seen wait times come down quite a bit in recent months. Um Thanks to uh, onboarding of a lot more drivers, um, our seat unavailable numbers have also come down. So there will be times where, especially during the peak commuting hours, you may not receive a proposal because there's too many people asking for a ride, than, more than there are vehicles. Um, but we track those every week, and those numbers are coming down quite dramatically. So, um, you know, I think there's always room for improvement, but uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. And also just doing our part to be maximizing the um, essentially the budgeted hours that have been provided to us by the city council as well. So that's um, and essentially just trying to match what we're seeing in terms of demand with um, what we have the remit to operate, if you will. Um, and the on, on job fairs. Right. Yeah. And, and helping people regain their privilege of driving if they'd like to be a driver and, you know, maybe have had their license suspended 10 years ago or something like that. Yeah, great question. So on the piece around job fairs, we're definitely eager to do as much as, as possible with you all directly and, and making sure that we're engaging with the community. We actually run our driver onboarding um, at Jersey City City, um, the engineering office um, that Mike works at. So definitely do as much in terms of like a local presence as possible and a, and a local push in terms of our advertising, onboarding, all of those sorts of things um, as well. In terms of, and we'd ha happily partner on, you know, a specific job fair as well. Um, in terms of helping folks uh, regain their license if they've lost it, I'm not sure that I'm familiar. Yeah, uh, happy to take that one. So, um, you know, like I said at the outset, you know, we're looking for uh, drivers with, you know, who provide great customer service, safe driving record, who are excited to, you know, serve the community. Uh, we really love it when, you know, people live in the community, have that local knowledge, are able to, like, you know, understand, you know, road closures, things of that sort, and really, uh, I think that adds an extra dimension. So uh, we're ha we sort of, like, work with every single person who applies to drive with VIA. Uh, every single one, you know, will receive a phone call. Uh, very often we conduct, you know, these onboarding events uh, within the Jersey City community, uh, Thank you for the, the, you know, the buildings that you provide for us. Uh, and, you know, we spend, you know, over a couple of hours with every single applicant. So happy to provide, you know, very detailed support. Uh, as long, uh, the one thing I will say is, you know, we do run background checks uh, and we do look for people who have a safe record of driving. So if you have uh, a number of moving violations or major violations that exceed a certain number, then we are contractually... Uh, not able to like, you know, onboard you as a driver. But if that is not the case, we're happy to provide guidance on, you know, how to renew your license. We don't ask for any special qualifications. It's really just a regular driver's license that you need to drive with via. Um, also, um, I don't, I don't, and I'm just, this may be a dumb question. I don't, I don't ride via, so I, I don't know. <laughs> um, is there any way, like I know, I used to catch the 87, and if I was, like, walking, there, I was like, let me change my mind. The bus is here. Let me put my hand out and get on. Is that mechanism accepted in this form of traveling, or do we stay away from that? And if so, why? No, unfortunately, you can't hail a, a via in that way. Um, there's some regulatory um, considerations there on from New Jersey State on the ability to actually, like, hail a like in the same way you wouldn't be able to hail an, an uber or that sort of thing um there's some like tnc regulations there that we're up against but but what if like we had some areas that was designated bus stops or via stops mm. like every i don't know every 15 blocks yeah that's a good question and it's something that we'll do and we can definitely discuss this as mm -hmm. well just um um one on one, but what we'll sometimes do in a lot of our um, services is station our vans at very popular pickup points okay. and kind of keep them empty. So let's say so that way there's um, a higher likelihood for a really fast ETA. There's already going to be van sitting outside. You'll still need to request it, but you're going to see that van right there uh, and be able to essentially get a really fast ETA and get right on board. Um, so that is something that that we can work together on um as you know the service evolves for sure because because i know the, you know the light rail is here so in my mind i'm thinking if someone have to be on a right rail that come at seven o'clock and it's 702 and they miss it it's like oh well a via stop is here and it look like a van is there let me i don't know try to get to the next light rail stop or let me try to get to work as quick as possible so that's that's why yeah. i asked that question totally makes sense okay yeah. Um, anyone else? Does anyone else have any questions on the Zoom or in person? We have someone with a hand up. Okay. Alicia, you've been asked to unmute. Um, one question I have 
question that I had is um, the company gives any type of supplements or uh, uh, supplemental funding for the service from the city or um, from the state? So a legal question is, does VIA receive supplemental funding from either the city or the state to provide the service? I would say, yeah, because yeah. you're charging $2. That's yeah. the only way <laughs> it will it work. You're right, Councilman. Uh, we do charge uh, all riders of the service $2 per trip. Obviously, well, not obviously, but it certainly costs more than $2 uh, per trip to provide the service. But I think the city as a, as, has taken on as a priority to really provide uh, transit service for specifically areas that maybe have infrequent or or limited public transportation. Um, so it's really a it's a policy statement. It's a priority that you know the city set out to to provide this service for residents. Oh, and, and no state funding, correct? Uh, so not yet, but we're actually we just got the yeah we um, <laughs> this is so kind of we're nice. we're excited to share and we'll um, we've over the past um, several months secured about like a million dollars worth of um, grants and other funding um, essentially from the state. Um, there is a um, Department of Energy Protection um, grant that was um, awarded to the city, um, as well as essentially a, a grant through NJ Transit as well. And they, wait, these V these vehicles are electrical vehicles. We have a couple of electric vehicles in the service. Yes. Because we we're trying to go green. So I have a follow-up yeah. question. Um, yes. How long? Yeah. How long is the um, supplemental funding? been provided for because ideally you know that the price would change once that expires yeah that's a great question um our current um contract runs through february and and we'll work with um the city on um you know extending past that yeah so to answer your question the service was launched in february of 2020 that's when the the supplemental funding started to when the service started um it's renewed on an annual basis uh so right now we're on a february uh, scheduled to, for renewal uh, each year. And also, um, along those lines, if we can see, um, I mean, I haven't looked at it again, so I don't know, if we can see the ridership from the exception of the program to current day, and then also, um, like, I don't know, let's say if you got a million dollars to start in 2020 in February and in 2021 in February, you were requesting two million. And it's like as a council and then as a regular citizen, a taxpayer in the city was like, what is the justification of this extra million dollars? And he was like, well, in 2020, there were 15,000 people. And then in 2021, it, you know, the expectations is going to go up. We're going to serve more people. So the data really gives us a synopsis of exactly what's going on, how the funding is being spent, who's utilizing the service, how much the service is being utilized, period. Um, so that would be helpful as well. I can definitely provide that for you. Yes. We have another question from Denise Bryant. Ms. Bryant? Yeah, yeah, great question. So I, I heard two parts to that. One was uh, what are the age limits and two is you know, how much do drivers make. So uh, to drive with VIA, we, you need to be at least 25 years old. Uh, this is because we work with, uh, you know, large uh, fleet managers who rent the vehicles and they have age limits. But if you're about the age of 25, you can drive with VIA. No upper limit. So if you're excited to drive with us, we are excited to have you. Uh, and two, uh, drivers make about uh, 20 to $22 per hour. Uh, and, you know, you're not driving your own personal vehicle. You're driving those, you know, purple vans. Uh, we pay for gas. We pay for maintenance. Uh, and really, uh, when I talk about 20 to $22 per hour, uh, that varies based on the time of day or day of the week. But that's what you take home. Uh, on a net basis. Yeah, to, so, so I also heard like a per mile question. It's um, truly per hour. 
um, which makes it really clean and easy um, as well to, to know um, for VIA drivers, we provide a lot of transparency that if you work this shift, this is the amount of money you'll make. Um, and we also offer incentives, um, things like um, if you drive, for, once you hit 45 hours driven in a given week or 25 hours driven in a given week, um, you'll get an extra bonus on top. So things like that that make it um, a true livelihood for, for a lot of our drivers and, and a reliable source of income as well. And I think the last part of that question was, uh, is CDL required? And it's not. Yeah, no CDL required. Um, do we know how many, um, so you have how many drivers now? We have um, like over 100 drivers over who are 100. eligible to drive. But in an average week, I would say about uh, 80 to 90 drivers drive. So out of 100, and if you know, you may not know, um uh, how many of those drivers would you say are Jersey City residents? Uh, uh, we, we can provide that information. We can look into it. Uh, my guess is the, the vast majority of people live okay. within a 30-mile radius uh, of, our, uh, of our parking lot. So, but we, we can look into that. All right. Does someone else have a – someone have their hand up? I can't. Alika has another question. Alika? Yeah. So um, the other question I have was if you did not have the city funding – what would be the price of the, the drives on average? It's it's a good question. It's one that I just don't have an answer to. We, we don't operate services in that way. Um, you might be thinking potentially of our New York City service that we had ran, um, we'd been running pre-COVID. That's just not something that um, that we run or, or would run in Jersey City. We really look at this as a partnership um, with the the city and the city council um, to provide this to, to to serve these trips. Okay. Does uh, anyone else have any questions with respect to via employment ridership? The program. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. I'll definitely be in contact with you as it relates to the data so we can disseminate it to the community at large. And I look forward to engaging and being in communication with you. You're more than welcome, welcome Excuse me, to stay for the uh, next half, which is the public safety portion. Um, you're also more than welcome to leave if you decide to do that as well. Uh, so moving right along, again, we have, is Jennifer still on? I can't see Jennifer's face for some reason. Jennifer, the officer that was on? Yes, yeah, Santos, she's still on? Okay, perfect. Um, so we have Jennifer and we have Captain Ski for the West District. I guess so to open it up, um, if you can just give us a... A uh, brief update on the uh, deployment of of uh, what did they call? They like not standing posts, but SIDS. Um, what they took up was the SIDS program. Cut the mic. Take the mic. Is it on? No, you hit 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 the button. There you go. Okay, with the SIDS program, what it is it's extra walking posts? We put them in the areas we needed, so this way you'll see a guy walking up, or female, male, female. Walking up and down the street, it's you, in my area, it's going to be West Side Avenue, Ginley Square, Forest, from Bergen down to MLK, uh, Monticello area, and also we ha we share part of the north with uh, Sip Avenue up in Journal Square. Okay. Would you repeat the MLK uh, section again? Forest. We go from right from Forest down to Bergen. From Bergen to Far Bergen Forest, from Bergen down to MLK. Okay. Hey, Jen, can you give us um, the locations for, I guess, everything after Iggy, because Iggy would be the west. Yes, Iggy. I mean the south, excuse me. Yes, we are run from Virginia on Bergen all the way up to Wade. And I'm not sure about, um, and that's close from... On Martin Luther King, so from Virginia all the way up to Wade. Okay, I know I have been seeing increased presence indoor around Orient Avenue and MLK, Claremont Avenue, Grant Avenue, Myrtle Avenue, Boswick, and there's a station post on Wilkerson. 
So I know I've been seeing them in that area right there. Um, so at this point, we will allow the residents online and or in person to um, address their questions, comments, and concerns as it relates to public safety issues. And immediately, hands are going up in the Zoom. They're not wasting any time. Um, so what we'll do for, oh goodness. So what we'll do first is we'll do the questions in the Zoom first, and then we'll do the in-person question second, since we did it vice versa, the first one. And the first person I can see from my viewpoint is Carol, J Carolyn Jenkins. Ms. Jenkins, can you unmute yourself? And then we will go to, uh, Ms. Harris. Ms. Jenkins, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you now. Uh, okay, good evening. Um, in listening to uh, what was said in regards to the officers and their posts, um, I understand that most of the officers that's on their posts is surely there for a reason. Um, and I don't think that every reason is the same based on where they are located at. Um, I remember uh, a couple of years before the virus outbreak that um, Harriet Tubman had a meeting with the mayor um, at the time, Councilman Robinson and um, a police captain. And we requested um, a patrol car to be located on the corner of Boxwood. Um, however, it seems now today that, like every other post, these officers aren't able to move other than, I mean, move, they move from where they at. And I, I'm kind of at a loss with that because um, we have a lot of young men out here that's um, violating and trespassing on our property. And I want to point out, Mr. Council Gilmore, that I am not referring to anybody or those being locked up. I am just trying to understand why there is a problem that um, that we constantly have to deal with this. And being that we are directly across the street from the library, especially during business hour, why is it that um, you know people have to step over these these young these young kids? to get into the library, and um, you witnessed that yourself during the, the summer months, the early summer months. And it's still going on now today, especially with school um, in, you know, in force, and these kids and their parents, whoever, are going into the library after school hours, and now they got to step over across these kids. And not only that, they sit there and they roll up marijuana. Now, I understand that uh, marijuana is now legal. However, I think whoever put it in motion is literally stupid because they didn't set no guidelines and there should have been some type of limitation because you should not have to open up your window, walk out your house and smell marijuana at 30 in the morning. You should not have to step over these young men to go in the library who's literally sitting there rolling up reefer. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But again, we have to deal with the outpour of these uh, um, young men, and I'm going to say young men because some of them are very young and some of them aren't young. Uh, and it's surprising that a lot of them go to school because you see it now that school has started. You don't see most of them until now after school. But it's like, okay, uh, no one is trying to really do anything in regards to that. Tell us what we need to do to um, more or less protect ourselves from these these young kids violating our property, trespassing, um, sitting or taking possession like they own it. I mean, we talked about this, but I have yet to hear a solution. And now the school is in force. I'm trying to understand even better. What is the solution? If you see all these cops out here, they're not doing anything. What's the purpose of having them out here? Okay, uh, Ms. Jenkins. Um, I know, I know, well, Jennifer's on here. She's the community officer. Um, as I understand, and trust me, these are real concerns. I see this every day. I understand your frustration, and rightfully so. Um, I, the West, no, not the West, the South just got a new captain, correct? Yes, 
um, Jen. And they're going to they're Jen, are you still on? Yes, let me she's probably muted herself. Let me unmute her. Um, I know they're 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 slated to have a community meeting on on next Tuesday in the same room at six PM. I'll um oh actually I won't be there because we have a council meeting. But um I would definitely reach out to the new captain and while while there is a there's a a thin line with respect to individuals congregating uh because of the laws you can't just move them. but it is problematic that individuals are on people's property something definitely needs to be done about that um so Ms. Jenkins as soon as um I have the opportunity oh Jennifer she's here um, as soon as I have the opportunity, I would definitely have a, um, a talk with the new captain. And again, they have a meeting on Tuesday. Tuesday, yes, Tuesday, 6 o'clock in the same room. If, if I may add, uh, just last week we had a meeting with uh, the manager of the library. He came to the district. We sat down. We spoke to him. And we have a plan in place um, to try to tackle those uh, individuals that are sitting there um, so we do have a plan in place, and we are working on it. Okay. I understand where the law, Miss um, Council Gomez, that you said in regards to the law, you know, it's a thin line in the fact that um, it now has changed. Um, I don't know who sat down and changed this law. I just know that sometimes when you open up a can of worms, you're not able to put all those worms back in. And I think that um, some of these laws need to come back into play because I don't think a lot of them is violating our rights. You know, at the end of the day, people need to be responsible for their own action. And I feel like this here, the bed that you make is the bed that you lie in. Now, a lot of these people out here, they're not ignorant. They're not stupid. They know fully well what they're doing. So I don't think that the law should change to, to more or less benefit them because that's exactly what the law has done. It has changed to benefit them and not so much the, the, the resident or the homeowners. Yes. I mean, we're just left out there like that movie Purge. You know, one day out the month, you can do whatever you want to do. They do this every day. Yeah, well, I, I, Ms. Ms. Jenkins, trust me, I understand your concern, but this, this they deemed it unconstitutional. So this is, is bigger than a municipal um, municipal government. And um, it's... it's <sighs> But me having an argument with one of them gentlemen tonight, this evening before this meeting start, because they threw a bottle in my yard, and then when I go out and say to them, there's a garbage can on the corner, now I got to sit up there and defend my right, my property, with two young men. And at the end of the day, anything can happen. So what is it going to take me or someone else to get injured or hurt because we are standing up for our property before literally something is done? Because what? It's a bigger thing. It's bigger than um, uh, us. Yeah. Taxpayer. No, I, I, like I said earlier, I think it's, it's a different story with respect to the property line. Um, that's that's a whole different conversation. That's actually trespassing right there when you are on some someone's property line. So again, we can um, we can definitely uh, engage the new South commander to see what. What is his plans to address this? And I trust me, I understand your frustration, and I see it. I see it. And it is extremely frustrating. It is extremely disheartening. I do see it. So I don't want to act like I'm being dismissive of that at all. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is Miss Harris, and then Bridget Lamar. Miss Harris. Yes, hi. Blessings to all. First, I would like to thank Erica for returning my call. Her immediate response is much better in the area on Archer Street. But I still have some concerns because years and years has gone past and from Fairmont back. And I know it's, I don't, and I'm not even sure what's Ward F. That's 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 Ward B right there. That's the new Ward B, which what's in question. Um, but seeing that the the South Commander is here and they that's their jurisdiction. Uh, I mean the West Commander and that's his jurisdiction. You can still um, 
you can still address your question, comment, or concern. That's the South, right? I mean, that's yeah, right. Okay. Okay, so my concern is the Monticello area altogether. And basically from Fairmont back to Montgomery Street, we never, ever, all the years, never had police presence. Storms Avenue, Archer Street. I even had a cop told me they're more concerned about bigger crime. But any crime, anything to me is a crime if I'm living in that area. So it, it's fair from Fairmont on back to Montgomery is always forgotten about. Storms Avenue, Archer Street, we got profit. People back there, you know, doing whatever they want to do. It's a side block that no, the cops don't come down. Nobody comes down. There was a time that I was calling every night, every night, every night. I'm tired. I'm tired of it. I must say, since that email I put out, it did get better. The quality of life is horrible. I can get up my come up my house in the morning to go to work. Whatever is done while me and my family is sleeping, papers all all over the ground, everything, whatever they doing. Um, the young lady said before about smoking weed, the blunts, whatever they do, they doing it. It's like we don't exist on these blocks, these side blocks. Nobody cares about these side blocks. Even when, I, when I'm coming from church at night, I'm coming down Monticello, the cops is out there, but the guys out there still doing what they do, so I'm not getting it. I'm not understanding. It's not me against them. I want to work with them and see what's, what's going on. I don't understand what's going on. Because, I mean, the more and more and more and more they build, it seems like our, our people are getting worse. The more buildings go up, things are getting worse for us. And that's a whole nother conversation. But I'm not understanding why it's, it's, it's just still go people up. The, the builders are building. The community, our community, is still going down while the builders are building. The drugs, it ain't just the weed. It's other drugs these kids are doing. And they don't care what they do. They don't they disrespect. It's not just weed they're doing out here. It's more than just that. Something's, something has to happen. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at it every day. I don't want to just get in my car and look at this stuff. Every day, they're like zombies. Okay. It's not marijuana. It's whatever they lace it. It's a whole lot of stuff going on. Okay. Um, and, I, like the lady, and like the lady said before, you argue, you fuss with these guys. I don't want to keep doing that. I yeah. come out my house, my husband got to pull out the... He can't, first of all, when we pull, we got to blow our horn just to pull in the driveway. Okay. You know, it, it's just getting to be too much. It's getting to be too much. Yes. Um, I uh, work every day. My husband worked for years, retired. He should, we can't even sit on our balcony. We have a balcony we can't sit on. Okay, I will let the, um. I know with respect to, I guess, the building and, and, and stuff like that. Um, I guess that's another conversation for another day. But the, I guess the captain can address the presence and the back end of of Monticello with respect to the police present. You said uh, what is you said Fairview to Montgomery, correct? Fairmont to Montgomery. Fair Archer. Orchard. So Orchard Stone. Oh, so the back. The back end. Um, Cap, you got anything on that with respect to uh, police um, presence in the Can area? you give me the times when most of this is happening? You got to cut your mic on, Cap. It's on. It's on? Oh, it's, it is on. Miss Harris. She might have muted herself again. Let me see. Let me ask her to unmute. Miss Harris, yes, you're on. Yeah. All right, Miss Harris, um, what time does this mainly happen? What time is this mainly the issues, the your problems you're having? What? Anytime. We get this at any time. Crawford Avenue, that little side block, Crawford, is is so much going on. What around. you what, what? Say that again. It's, it's you know Crawford is a side block next to Archer Street, next to my block. Oh, Cro Oh, yes, that's that little that's right. that yeah. Okay. Yes, and so much stuff goes on because they know. 
It's no, no cop is going to come down these blocks. So they pull up and park and they do what they want to do because they already know nobody's coming down here. Okay. No cops is coming down here. And do you, um, when, when I guess when they, when they're congregating or doing this activity or blocking the driveway, do you call the non-emergency number to uh, make a complaint about this? All due respect, Councilman, I'm telling you, I've been living here 15 years. From storms, I had a house on Storms Avenue, so there to move around here because of what was going on around. I'm, it, I've been living here 15 years. I so, have not enjoyed my balcony. And I'm telling you, if you check the West District record, you'll see how much time cops has been called. Okay. That's I just wanted to I just want I just wanted to know that um you have been calling because that is something that we have to take a look into. I have not called in a long I have not called this summer at all. I have not called this summer, like I said. I'm just tired. Cause soon as they, they go, really because when they come, they talk to the guys or whatever. They don't see nothing. Whatever they're doing, they don't see. They go. When they go, they come back out. Same thing over and over again. They go, you know, so maybe they fighting a losing battle. I don't know. Okay. I have not called, no. this, summer. Have not called this summer at all. No, Miss Harris, I, I urge you and everyone to... Um, not feel defeated. I know it is it is a rigorous task and it's very tiresome. Um, but you can't. You can't not not express your concerns. You pay taxes, you pay your bills when you're supposed to pay it, no matter how tired you are doing that. So you you have to make sure you keep these issues at the forefront. If you got a call every day and they don't come, I urge you and everyone to call every single day because this is a service that is vital to the community. It's a service that should be provided and it affects the quality of life. So don't, don't not call. Don't like, we can't operate with that mindset, with that defeated mindset that we've been having these complaints and concerns so long that they've fallen on deaf ears. I urge you to please continue to, to do that. I'm telling you, please. I'm not saying it in the terms of undefeated, because I'm never defeated. But I'm, it's what it is. I'm tired of this mess. It's I, like I just want to leave Jersey City altogether. And it's not being defeated. It's wanting what's better. I got grandkids coming up now. Mm -hmm. it's, what, it's wanting what's better. Because it's not getting better. It's better for who? Better for who? Mm. Yes. All I'm saying. Okay. If you would see all the garbage they had piled up there, it, I don't. And if I was told I can't find out who the landlord is because I will confront the landlord myself. No, Miss Harris, Miss Harris, Miss Harris. When there's issues that are concerned to you and your community. Call, send an email. Like we we have to do this stuff. People are not taking the onus and doing what's right. We don't live in a society, or at least we don't live in a city where that transpires a lot. You have to document this stuff. You have to constantly call people. I'm following up in regards to the email I sent to the last email, which was a follow-up about the last email. You have to you have to document this stuff. You have to make sure you're addressing the appropriate personnel who handle these issues. And if you don't know, then you ask who should be addressing this, because the last thing I want to happen on my watch is people have questions, comments and concerns about issues of quality of life or any other issue for that matter. And these issues not be addressed. This helps me to advocate for the constituents or the citizen when I see that there's a track record and a paper trail about issues on a specific topic. Then I can begin to ask, why haven't this been addressed? What are we going to do? What are the next steps for this issue? But 
if 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 I have someone that's so so you know so jaded and they're, and they're, they're frustrated with everything and the stuff is not being um, properly uh, recorded, then it, it it makes my job drastically harder to advocate for what we need. Can you at least do that for me? Yes, sir. Thank yes. you. Okay, and and if you can, please uh, email me, or you can let us put in the chat box the address where where the garbage is at with the buildings and stuff, because I, I don't I, I've been real like stickler with regards to the cleanliness of 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 the ward, so please uh, forward that up to us. Put that in the chat. Yes, ma'am. Uh, next, we have Bridget Lamar. Promoting Bridget Lamar. If you can please unmute yourself. And then we have Mike. Had his, oh, Mike, Mike, Mike is next. Hello, good evening. Councilman, good. can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Okay, I was calling, I mean, I'm going to find out that the South District have a game plan for all the activity that's going on on Martin Luther King between Boxwick and Murdo Avenue. Um, I want to piggyback off Ms. Jenkins. The Jersey City Police is parked on the corner of Boxwick, and once they get the complaint about the library, they push them from the library to across the street to Murdo, like they're playing chess. So um, it's very unsafe, the quality of life. They out here gambling, selling drugs, fighting, and it doesn't feel safe. And I've been in this home, home, a home for 13 years, and this is the worst it's been throughout these 13 years. And like Ms. Havis said, it makes you want to leave. It makes you not want to be bothered. And we, as a Javier Tubman, we have reached out to you. We have sent emails and this has been going on since April, and we're in um, October now. And instead of getting better, it has gotten worse. Violating our property, stealing electricity, um, breaking people gates, urinating, you name it, they're doing it. It's like the wild, wild west over here. Okay. Yes, um, so again... uh will have a game plan for this situation. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to address this issue with regards to that area with the captain on tuesday um like i i trust me i understand i get it and like i said with respect to that property line something definitely has to be done if people are coming sitting on your porch charging their phone littering urinating and stuff that that's 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 different than than being in 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 front uh on a public sidewalk that's 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 a little different so I, I'm urging all of you to come out to um, to voice your concerns with respect to that. I can't give you a plan because it, it's not within it's not within my duties um, to do that. And, you know, there's a chain of command on how things are supposed to be done in a proper manner. But trust me, I, I see it. I see it. And I will continue to advocate for the community as it relates to the quality of life because it sucks in that area. It sucks. Yeah, it has become confrontational. You know, we homeowners. Mm -hmm. and we go out there, ask these young men to move. Some are moved. Some others will get disrespectful. Mm -hmm. These are gangbangers, mind you. We're not dealing with law by citizens out here. We're dealing with gangbangers. Yes, definitely. Why should we have to put our lives at risk and we paying taxes and the officer is posted on that corner and they act like they don't see anything. And we call. We are, we are constantly call. We home on. We got school teachers living in these houses. We got mothers with disabled kids. We can't even get no proper rest at night because all the noise. And now that it's cold, they pulling up in cars, parking on the bus stop, smoking and doing what they do inside their vehicles now. Uh huh. No, let's, uh, like I said, but, um, you, just to let you know, it's very frustrating, and I pray that they come up with a game plan instead of moving them from one corner to the other, maybe put the eyes in the sky. I don't know, Bridge. Bridge, I'm frustrated with you. Um, like, like I, like, it's, it's so disheartening, man, when I, when I see that with that area, and I purposely, so I don't 
you know, lose sight of it. I purposely walk that, I take that route every single day on purpose. And I have seen you in the past, and we're trying to bring something to the neighborhood. We got a yard, real nice style, flowery. And then we got these young young people coming in here and disrespect us, and they don't even live here. They're coming from all over different parts of Jersey City. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I want you, I want you, to, I want y'all to come out Tuesday to meet the new captain, and this, this, this is going to take all hands on deck approach. So if 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 you have solutions or suggestions, um, I haven't met the captain, so I don't I don't know who he is or what, but I'm sure um, he'll be willing to to take uh, input with respect to that. Councilman, you know, I lived in Jersey City for 50 years. I grew up in downtown. This is not going on. As a young adult, I lived in the Jersey City Heights. This is not going on. I buy a property in the South District, and wow, it's, it's challenging. Yes. Jen, you want to say something? I'll see you. Um... Yes, if I may add, um, like you suggested before, we do encourage the residents to call the non-emergency number so we have a history. It uh, helps us build a better case like uh we have cameras pointed at certain areas we're definitely working like i said before on the corner of uh boswick and myrtle with the library we uh have um, actually pictures of a few gentlemen who've been uh, trespassing so we're working on identifying these kids but the main thing is to please please call the non-emergency number that's what we do all the time. It should be documented as well. And once they push them off the library, they don't do nothing but come across the street. About a month ago, I heard one of these young men disrespect the officer, offer his body part to the officer, and nothing was said. It, it, it's crazy. They bet they disrespect officers, so you know they're going to disrespect us. <laughs> so that's one of my concerns. Mr. Lamar, if you can, uh, feel free to call the South District and um, speak to me so I can speak to you on uh, privately so I can get more information. Not a problem. Reach out to the South? Yes, ma'am. Uh, extension 5454. That's my direct extension. 5454. Thank you. Have a No problem. Okay. Um, Mike, can you uh, unmute yourself, please? Mike have a Steelers hat on. That's me. Good evening, every, good evening, everyone. Um, my question is, um, my question is basically, I, I keep joining these meetings as of late on behalf of my mom who lives it on, who lives off of on um, Woodward Street, off of Community Park Avenue. So hearing everybody's, you know, the recent questions, my my question would be, I don't know if you're in a position, councilman, or the officers to like answer this question now, but is there a plan of action to just basically hire more officers anytime soon? Maybe um, because I work in the city of Newark, and I know they have a program that Jersey that Newark has adopted to to hire officers by way of a non civil service way. So I don't know what Jersey City's plans are, but I know locally the push to hire more officers is a is a countrywide problem. But you know, I just wanted to know that given what officers are asked to do, does Jersey City plan on bringing in a you know a boatload of officers um as much as they can anytime soon? Okay. I know uh, for me, Mike, um, I'm not necessarily opposed to extra officers, but I think a conversation needs to be had with respect to hiring um, different service providers. We have we actually have a great deal of police. In fact, um, according to the administration, this is the largest the police force have ever been. I'm of the opinion that we need to take some more progressive steps with respect to hiring um, individuals that can offer resources, i.e. mental health resources, um, drug addiction resources, and things of that nature. Because I'm of the opinion that this is a problem that we can't necessarily police our way out of solely. There needs to be... Uh, wraparound services available for this demographic. Case in point, if you have, I don't know, 15, 20 people congregating down in the area you just stated, um, let's say the police can lock them up and they lock everyone up. And they can't hold them forever. And if, and if there's no rehabilitation mechanism going on wherever they house that, then they're going to come back and they're going to do the same thing. 
I'm of the opinion that we'll get a better bang for our buck if we can provide resources to these individuals, right? Why are they hanging out? Why are they constantly sprung out on drugs? A lot of people have mental health issues that we're not even addressing, we're not even dealing with. The last thing I want as a sitting council person is for an incident to occur where the police is going to move, move or apprehend someone else. And then there's a physical altercation because someone has some type of mental episode or someone is strung out on drugs. Right. So I think the conversation needs to to have a voice with respect to what other resources can we use in conjunction with police in the community. Um, so that's something that I've always advocated for. That's something I will continue to advocate for. And um, there I have to double check. There have been something um, that we passed recently with respect to having uh, individuals assist police in instance like this. So, I mean, that's my position and that's my take on it. Uh, Get yeah, Cap. Real quick, uh, that's the East District. I talked to, what is the actual issue you're having over there? So I can send it to her now. Mike. Mike, are you on mute? No, I'm, I'm listening. There you is go. question directed at me? Yes. Yes. Um, you know, the issue, I'm just listening to what, the, you know, obviously the, the situation and um, the communal hall, Woodward Street area, it's just, it's just more sort of loitering. You know, I mean, I get it because I'm a former officer myself in another city, so I, I get what limitations are. But to what degree people do feel safe at this point, you know, we, me and my brother, we do things, a lot, a lot of things on behalf of my mother. So when it comes time that she doesn't feel like going out anymore, so we're basically echoing the concern that, that that was unvoiced earlier, but in doing so, you know, I'm not ignorant to the limitations of what can and can't be done. I mean, loitering, I don't know what the status is of the law, people hanging out on the corners. I mean, especially when they got a park down the street on Lafayette, and you know, so why they feel, in Lafayette Park, one of the big things I noticed is that depending on what, my brother is on the line, but we noticed that certain hours of the day, Lafayette Park lights are out, and it seems like that strip Near the Whitlock Homes, there's a little cobblestone area. It just seems like there's a bunch of cars now that gather there under the lights. So I don't know what they're doing, but it just seems like to the degree that people are frustrated that they're pushed to the side street, they will congregate somewhere else. And, you know, I just, I just know it's an ongoing problem. The frustration speaks for itself. But that, that, that's my thing. Basically, I don't know how to get a hand on loitering, but I know loitering is by far the biggest thing when you're trying to get to and from. You know, a peaceful walk to the store, to the park. So I appreciate the answer you gave, Councilman. All right. Um, Ms. Harris, we'll go back to you. And then if anyone in the room have a question, comment, concern, if you can come to the podium and grab the mic. And she's on her way. Um, so, Ms. Harris, uh, real quick, go ahead. And then we'll go to the young lady here. No, I just wanted to know Ward B. First of all, thank you for having this meeting every month. I think you're doing a great job, Councilman. Um, Ward B, that's the just that's the I mean Ward B, right? Yes, that back hook. It's like a real weird shape, um, and a back hook. Yeah. Okay, so I think you said it, but I'm not sure what district is that. Well, that's still the the West District. Um, for the sake of public safety issues, but for the sake of ward jurisdiction, that's 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 B. So that's why I said your questions, comments, concerns are warranted because uh, Captain Ski he covers he covers that area as well. So Ward B is from here, all on the west side. Where's Ward B? Yes, Ward B. So it um. <sighs> It's, uh, Ward B. Oh, you you put yeah. She we're gonna um send you uh the link to the to the whole map, um so that way you can see what the line is is drawing at, um and it's something that you it's something like you really have to be looking at it to understand it because there is a lot of this side is this ward and this side is that ward and all that, um so I really don't want to misspeak, but I know. 
where you're at is in Ward B, but for the entirety of what's Ward B, what's Ward F, and so forth and so on, uh, we put the link in the chat so you can um, view that. Okay. Um, young lady, can you um, get your question, comment, concern? Yes. Um, is it on? My mic, is it on? No, I can't hear you. Good afternoon or good evening. Um, Councilman Educational Gilmore, let me start by saying I appreciate you returning my calls and the, the many that I've made to you. I'm Cheryl Lynette Marion. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. You heard him say, oh, so no I'm, more I'm, calls I'm, I'm really cool. <laughs> okay, I have, um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in house on Randolph Avenue. I've been living there for 61 years. I was born and raised in the house that I live at now on Randolph Avenue. I've been living there for 61 years. Never lived anywhere else. I have two, I have many concerns, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to go with two. Number one is we have had a rash of car uh, car thefts, car break-ins, car va vandalisms, vandalism on Randolph and Carteret in that section. And um, it's becoming costly to the residents. We have no police presence. Uh, I've suggested to you in conversation, maybe we can get a police station on the corner. And after the community realizes there's a police on the corner, that station, then we could slowly wean them from actually sitting there to just walking the beat. And once we get a feel that there's police presence, some of our behaviors hopefully will change. Okay. The next thing is parking. There is no place to park. If you're not in by 5, 530, I may have to park three blocks away. I'm a senior citizen. I don't want to be walking three blocks away at nighttime um, with no police presence. It, mm -hmm. You know, it makes for a dangerous situation. Now, I don't know. I know it has something to do with the infrastructure and the people coming in and building. You all need to get together. We don't have that much space in Jersey City. I'm beginning to feel claustrophobic. You know, so I, I'm just I'm I'm really concerned about the um the car vandalism and the parking at this point. So you can uh it's almost like a dual point. And and, can... and uh, let me just ask you a question also, regards to the car vandalism. I know the police force has a um uh, uh, uh something set aside for victims. And, you know, you give money to the victims. Now, I feel that it cost me $960 to get my car uh, fixed after uh, it was vandalized. I'm looking for a department within the police department that would help reimburse me for that because I am a victim. Okay. I'm not familiar with those funds. <laughs> so um, um, The police department doesn't have that funds. The prosecutor's office has a victim fund okay say it loud the prosecutor or right it's and i think it's more it's victim of violent crimes, crimes. Compensation. compensation so that's it's that's, more like somebody robs you and attacks you it has to be a physical con of my body. yes physical right it's my body it's vccb victim of violent crimes compensation and i don't think you want any money from from it from there because it's not a catalytic converter yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. okay. Um, but with respect to the parking, um, well, now, I, you I, got it bad. That area is extremely rough with and, parking and, and, right and there. Continuing to build. Yeah. See, and that's why when when they was doing this master plan, this is even before I was in office, I was urging everyone to fill out to participate in this master plan vision for the entire city but only a certain group of people are, are are putting input so what happens is this master plan is with the administration 
goes by when new things need to happen. Oh, there's no need for parking. What do you mean there's no need for parking? There's nowhere to park now. Well, the master plan doesn't call for parking. And this is why it's extremely important for us to participate when th when, and really in everything as it relates to something that's going to affect us in our community. Um, so, man, parking, that, that's the number one concern in the entire city. Every time I meet with a developer, my first question after is it affordable units is, what is your plan for parking? Because for me, I'm already in a community. I know that it's hard to park now. So if you're going to put something with 32 units, I already know it's going to be. I don't need to look at a traffic study. In fact, I don't even want to hear what the traffic okay. studies say because I see it every day. All right. I, but and that the, parking in that area. Uh, yeah, mm. it's like, you know, okay. Um, should I break my legs so I could get a paralegal parking? No, room? no, 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 no. Please <laughs> do, do, do. Okay. And the, um, the, the, I have a comment. You keep telling people to call the non-emergency police number. Yes. A lot of people are not aware of that number. So if you are able to post it, you know, during this meeting, so people will know what that number is. I sure that will. That would be helpful to me. And also, residents. like I said, um, yeah, and, and like I said, um, the website is your friend. The social media pages is your friend. My email address is your friend. Because for me, I have no problem with going to advocate. I come from the I come from that realm, right? But I need to have ammunition. I can't go and advocate because you said you called three times or you emailed somebody three times and I don't have record of that. Well, you know, I've given you plenty of Well, yeah, you, your calls, your <laughs> calling privileges. All have, right, well, I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm not going to take a bit more of your time because I know there are other residents with other concerns. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Next. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good evening. I'm, I'm speaking I'm on behalf of them young guys. That's on Martin on Luther King Drive between Boswood and Myrtle. These are the same young men that came from Wilkerson. We, we live on Wilkerson. Uh -huh. And these are the same young men. I don't fight with them. I watch them sit on my porch, on my porch smoke weed. I come home from church, they there, told, told me they own the porch. So I just took a picture and went in the house. And they left. But then 2021, they were fighting the police on, on the block. I mean, a bunch of police come. And now they move from Wilkerson to, to the avenue. And I'm saying they're repeated offenders. But what, what I want to do, what I'm doing, and with the help of the Block Association, we getting them young men. We had them a past few Thursdays playing basketball against each other, feeding them. Now, now my plan is to have job fairs, trying to help them find jobs, get back in school, find jobs because I can't tell them to stop selling drugs if that's the If you can't provide, employer. yes. Yes. So we're going to try to find jobs and we're in the process of doing that now. But I watch these guys. I walk past them earlier. Oh, come here. They sitting there doing, doing their thing. They hustling in your face. Then they looking at me. What's up, Unc? You good? And I'm saying this. I'm from these same streets. And I have, a, I have a drug program reaching our recovery center, trying to help them get insurance, get in programs. And I send five people every day. But now it's the young guys. Because, I mean, they out there, and they need help. And we're not helping them. And I was once them. Till old lady helped me. Told me I don't belong out here. I'm on her porch. I'm on the porch, 6 to 6. 6 at night to 6 in the morning. And one day she said something to me. I told her I had to feed my daughters and my sons. She got me an application. And I worked at the hospital as a cook for 12 years. And now I'm just, I'm just willing to change my community. I want to change my community. And I know y'all can't do it alone. And with the help of everybody, we, we're doing a lot of complaining. But we, won't, we, got four, we got a few people at the meeting. Let us, the people online, y'all got to come out and be 
it's more power with numbers. Mm -hmm. Like we 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 at Wilkerson and Bayview Community Block Association, we're gonna work together to clean that avenue up. Like where my church is between Bidwell and Bayview, you know they sit out there Friday night and trash the joint. So what I do is I come a little early to church and clean it up. And when I catch them, I charge them. Give me ten dollars. Give me ten dollars. If y'all give me fifty, it'd be easy. If I got to clean up after them, they're gonna pay me. But I'm I'm working with with you guys, and I really want better for our community. And it's gonna get better because I'm watching what you know how you look at the look at the signs of the time. They building, mm -hmm. and we're destroying. But we have to. These young guys, they're crying out for help. Jail ain't going to help them. We got to have a plan. And we got to do it now. With the help of you guys, we, we'll get it done. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, and that's, that's like, that's essentially the message, right? How do we do this collectively? Because... I mean, I mean, I get it. it. It's frustrating for people to be in front of your door, for you to have to walk through smoke, for people to vandalize your property. I get it. I will be aggravated and I'll be pissed off as well. But all I'm saying is that these people didn't drop from nowhere. These are real people. These are these are your kids. These are your nephews. These are your brothers. These are your neighbors. Right. So. I'm saying, why not address address it? And that was my biggest pet peeve with what um with the police on a corner. It's like, all right, if you chase them from on that corner, they'll go in the middle of the block or they'll go to the next block, right? What are we doing to address the core issue of why this is occurring? And less than until we address that, we can make it look good and run them off the avenue all we want. But if in, until we address the issue, right, and, and that's the stuff that keeps me up at night and keeps me going every morning because I'm of the humble opinion that it's, it's going to change. I wanted to change while we're still here versus when we're gone. But it, it's going to change. It is going to change. And like I said, it's it's frustrating for you to to see that every single day when you come from work like i pay my taxes my taxes went up my quality of life so that stuff is it's, it's a hard pill to swallow right but i just want to urge people like these are real people and it's not even a matter of if it's it, if, if it's more important this person versus that person or this group versus that proof right i'm essentially saying how can we come up as a whole because when you're talking about public safety and violence as a whole it's a multi-level problem. Government can't do it on its own. Police can't do it on its own. Community can't do it on its own. It, it, it's just too complicated. It's just too crime. So it, it's going to take a holistic approach. Violence ain't come here overnight. We're not getting rid of it overnight. And, and we have to be in this. We have to be in this together. And I, I'm pledging. Like, I'm, I'm in this with the people. I'm in this with the people. So, uh, again, Miss Martin. Hi. Um. Is it? Does it? I guess it's on. I guess I gotta take this off. There you go. Uh, yeah, I um, I just have a question for the police officer, Miss Jennifer. Um, she's and on. I, and I understand that um, they say that the police are not supposed to leave their post, but I had a situation. I live on Wilkinson Avenue, and I had a situation where across the street from me, the first house which was maybe two doors away from the police car and the police sitting there. And I called the precinct because it was a lot of noise, music and arguing and fussing and fighting. And, and this is like 12 o'clock at night, I couldn't sleep. And so I called the precinct and they told me they would send somebody. And I'm like, but you have a police car and two police officers two doors away from where I'm complaining about. I don't understand why they couldn't walk two doors and quiet that down. Hmm. Unfortunately, the way that these fixed posts are set, those officers are not to move. Unless it's a life-threatening matter, 
those officers are not to move. And that's not coming directly from the officers, it's coming from, from above, so from their superiors. Um, normally, we don't encourage uh, residents to call the district because they, uh, cars cannot be dispatched from there. Hence why we're always pushing out that number, that uh, 5477 number. Yeah, I call that a lot. Because able to dispatch cars. From the precinct, we cannot. Okay, no, I call the 547 number all the time. Okay. And it takes hours and hours the, before the anything is done. In South District alone, like we answer so many calls for services, it's insane. Um, it, it's uh, unfortunately unfortunate that we can't get there as soon as you would like us to. But just do understand that the South District is one of the busiest districts. And the call will be answered. It's just, unfortunately, sometimes it's not as fast. There's so many... Uh, higher priority calls that the police officers must go to first. And that's why it seems like the residents feel like we're not getting there. But uh, just please uh, be patient. We're trying. Um, again, you can definitely call my office. And I would love to work with you one on one. I've been working with a lot of residents from from that area. And like uh, Mr. Councilman stated, uh, next Tuesday, same location where you're at right now, we will have uh, our district meeting. Yeah. And you can meet our, our new South Captain. Yeah, I'll be here. Expressing concerns there as well. Okay. Oh. And I would like to thank Frank Gilmore because last summer, not this summer past, but the summer before, and you know, he helped me. I, I Every day, I had to go out my door and get people off my porch. They literally would come up and sit in the chairs that I had on the porch. Mm -hmm. They would drink their beer. They would leave their food containers. All, I, and, and Frank knows that I was constantly, constantly, you know, and between him and a couple of other people, this summer, only two times did I have to go out and ask people yeah. to get off the porch. Mm -hmm. You know, so I thank you so much for your help last summer, you know, that, that let yes. me have a pretty I mean, good that's, that's the thing, summer. like, when, when, when residents call me, and if I have the time, like, I'll go around there and talk to the young fellas, like, personally. Like, can you please just, like, do not, you know, don't be on a porch, don't be in front of their... Um, in front of their door, but the harsh reality, while I've helped you, I've created a problem somewhere else because they'll say, all right, coach, well, we won't, we won't sit here because you said don't sit here, but we want, we going to sit somewhere. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the challenge right there, right? That's the challenge. So, I mean, again, we're, 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 we're willing to take on a challenge and it's, it's going to take a holistic approach. I'm telling we don't have the answer. I, I'm telling you now. We have our block association together now, and we're gonna we're gonna be doing yes, some things. Yes, absolutely, and that's that's great. We're we're urging everyone to and I'll be merge and start Tuesday, block association. Definitely. Yes, ma'am. And I will let the people on the block on. Yeah, on and that's another block, thing. Like I need I, I, I need to see to here I need to see a mass Tuesday. group of people coming out to express their frustration because for me I'm like I get literally a hundred and something emails a day of and, and they're not complaints right they're concerns right I don't like concern you, you're not complaining this is a service that you pay for that you should be afforded to receive right, right? so it's a concern so we get all these emails these concerns a hundred and something emails but we have these meetings, we have city council meetings, they have captain meetings, and the people don't come. I need that energy when you're emailing and when you're constantly calling. I need that same energy when it comes to attending these meetings. We have to have that same type of energy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you convey a message. Yeah. So and we'll go to... Uh, and I was just going to say, I'll be calling resident response tomorrow because I believe, and, and I'm almost sure, from the Salvation Army, they're dumping whoever it is is dumping stuff on the right opposite on side, Wilson right? Avenue on that side street right there at the near Martin Luther King Drive, constantly just dumping. Now there's a bunch of books, it's clothes. It looks and like all what's happening stuff. is the people dropping donations off for the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army is closed. People are looking through to see what they want. And they're doing it in a in a in an unreasonable manner, dust creating litter all over the area. 
So that's what it looked like um, to be happening. Um, I've, I've had my eye on that. I'm trying to really put a pulse on that. I'm not sure, but that's what it's looked like is, is what is happening. tomorrow. Okay. You know, so. All right. All right. Thank you. Miss, um, oh, hold on one more. Miss Brian, we're coming to you next, young lady. Um, I apologize. I had one more issue, and it was about these city bikes. A lot of crimes are being committed by people using these city bikes, you know, the little blue bikes. Yes. And, um, in fact, I have one thrown on my property right now, and I, I wanted to throw it in the street, but it's too heavy for me to lift. But um, I, um, I have a suggestion, or, I, you know, this is just off the top of my head, when I don't know how those work when you go to get the city bike, uh -huh. you know, when you go to actually use one but i was thinking that maybe if when you use a city bike if they could take a picture of the person that's purchasing that bike to ride for whatever time and to see that it's returned and the picture is taken when it's returned because you use a credit card or something i was yeah told, you right? use well that's that i mean I, that's a city that's a private entity i i, I don't have no suggestions for them Oh, because uh, a, a lot of entity. car vandalism is being used by people riding these city bikes. Yeah, but what I'm saying, for the sake of, like, I mean, because if they get that camber recognition, is a certain amount of money they have to invest, and I just don't know if they're... I, I, I just can't understand how... I've seen some city bikes that haven't been on a rack in a year. Okay. I've seen some city bikes, half of them black, half of them still blue. I, I don't know what city bike is doing with these. With these, I don't even know if they have tracking mechanisms on them. And I see those things everywhere. Yeah, because we have like three or four on my block right now that's just been laying there. Uh, yeah. You know, you just laying there. You got there. some on the side of your house. Yeah, and I have one on the side of my house. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't. I my thought they had a one GPS in, her backyard. in them. They don't have GPS in them? They have a Uh huh. And see if it's open. But at some point, them from a a financial standpoint, they have to be looking, yeah. seeing that they're missing bikes from their fleet. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's probably yeah. Maybe insurance. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I'll give me a city bike. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's okay. Thank you. All right, Miss uh, Miss Denise Bryant. Denise, can you unmute yourself, please, young lady? Yes, and I'm unmuted now. Uh, I guess maybe my comment or my question probably should be saved until the captain's meeting next Tuesday, and I will be there, right? But I thought, did I hear uh, uh, Officer Jennifer say that these officers that are there, they're not allowed to leave the post for any reason whatsoever? So I guess I'm, I'm a little confused, and then what, what's the good of having them out there if they can't leave the post? Because obviously just their presence alone is not stopping anything. We see that because we see what's going on between Myrtle, and you don't even have to stop at Boston because I live on Bayview, and you can go all the way up the avenue, and right there by the pastor's uh, church right there by Bigwell, like you have to say, excuse me, excuse me just to get by. So, yeah, if the cops are out there, yeah, but they can't leave their posts, then their presence is not doing a hell of a lot much good. Not in, not that I can see anyway. But as I said, maybe that's supposed to be addressed to the captain's meeting next week, right? Yeah, and, I, uh, I don't. Miss, uh, I don't think she said. I think she said in emergency situations they can actually move. I will let um, Jennifer if you can unmute and uh, answer her. Yes, that's correct. In in cases obviously something emergent, they will move. The problem is that those officers are placed there for a specific reason. So if it's like an argument or something that can be handled that is not an emergency by someone else, and another officer will handle it. The officers on the post are to remain on post. Again, in case this life or death situation or something that they can assist immediately, something of a that needs immediate attention. And again, um, Miss Bryant, um, th th with with respect to the the fixed post, this this is coming from 
the public safety director, the police director, like that's coming from the higher ups. Um, these officers that's out there, they don't have any like really any say in if they're state they, they they're assigned to a specific task and the detail and they have to follow those. Um I think the, the, the bigger question um for the for the broad of conversation is um, is this effective? Does this work? What is the rationale for that? So that's why in some of the meetings, we actually invite the public safety director here to, um, I guess, give rationales or reasoning behind why these fixed posts are, are, are there. Um, so I, I agree. I, I share your sentiment. I understand um, your frustration as it relates to um, to these six po these fixed posts. Um, so that, that would be a question that, I mean, it, I, I don't know how much, uh, the captain in the South can address it, seeing that it comes from the higher ups, but at the very least he can understand your concern as it relates to that and public safety. So yeah, definitely Tuesday, come out, invite your neighbor, invite your family, invite a friend too. Oh, indeed. I absolutely will. I've been a part of the Bacchus Association at the time of farm also that Miss Martin's been talking about the Bayview Wilkins yes. Block Association that we're trying to get together. So yes, I'm very interested in my area because my parents bought this house back in 1967. We oh Lord. To move on Avenue. Everybody's starting to tell the age by how long they lived in these houses. So yeah, I have a vested interest in this area and yes, I don't want to see it fall apart. I don't want to see it get torn down. And I don't want to see the things happening to it to the people that live here because there's still some great people that live in this area. And we don't want to feel like victims. We don't want to feel like prisoners in our own homes, the older that we're getting. Or even with our grandchildren. I heard somebody mention their grandkids now. And these children are out there. And that's a whole nother thing. Like these parents, they turn these children out in the street like they're wild animals. They're out there all times of day and night. I'm saying these little kids, don't you have homework? What the hell are you doing out here running up and down the street all night, man? So it's a lot going on. It is a lot. But, yeah, I, I will definitely be there next Tuesday because uh, uh, if we don't let, we don't speak out, nothing's going to change. That's all. And oh. I don't have a problem speaking. And I want to thank you, Councilman Gilmore, because you're like a breath of fresh air. You've given us a lot of hope here just to if you have these meetings and you show up and you offer your assistance and you answer our calls and our emails and that's a blessing so yeah things will get better I uh, think things will get better too. okay we'll go with um miss jenkins and then miss martin to close out um so miss jenkins yes can you hear me yes ma'am okay um one quick question um and it's basically um doesn't have anything to do with um, the quality of life, so to speak. But um, you and um, Mr. McCann and the palm tree um, uh, guys was out here yes. a week ago. Yes. Um, and you talked about a pallet. Did anything come about that? We're, we're actually still working on that. Um, they 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 called me when I was there with you. I literally went on vacation right after that and then i came back and i had to go to dc they have been reaching out i see they have left messages i'm going to follow up with them this week and we're going to get back with you with you guys in that area um but that is definitely something we're looking to do to address that issue with the uh with the trees and the curves i appreciate that and then i got one other comment too. miss jenkins you said you had one more other question miss jenkins <laughs> go ahead miss jenkins the gentleman who said that he, he, you know, he was a part of the street at one point. Bishop speaks. Yes. Yes. Um, in regards to that, I think we all can relate and understand because anybody that was born here in Jersey City, we all been out there in the street and did a little this, that, and other. However, I think in regards to the laws changing is how we lost a lot of these, um, not so much these kids, but their parents because their parents was lost. It's the reason why these kids now today are lost. Mm -hmm. So 
at the end of the day, yes, I do agree with you a little bit in regards to saying that it takes a village because it took a village. I used to live on Wilkinson when I was younger. And Wilkinson was a beautiful block. And everybody watched over everybody. Wilkinson is so still parents, a beautiful block. Trust me, your parents knew about it. Mm -hmm. But again, at this point, uh, I think all of us coming together, trying to, because we, me and myself, and Miss Lamar, Bridget Lamar, we try to talk to some of these guys out here ourselves. And there are certain ones that you can talk to, and there are certain ones that look at you and roll their eyes. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we don't try to blackball all of them. We do try to reach out to certain ones to say, okay, they seem like they are reachable, that you can talk to them. Okay. And, and, and I don't see what else, what more that we can do as women, given, you know, the fact that we're up there a little bit in age and what have you, can do other than try to talk to them. But I just wanted to share that with him because he made that comment. It's, it's not like most of us don't try to talk to these young men and find out and let them know that it's a better way of living, you know, of, of how they can. And they got talent. A lot of them got talent. Mm -hmm. And we point that out to them that they can utilize these talents that they got. But that's all I want to say. And thank you again, Mr. Gilmore. Yes, um, I think also um, the neighbor and block associations should get together to become familiarized with each other. Um, maybe they had this problem, and this is how they handled it. Um, so that's something we look forward to facilitating in the future as well. Ms. Martin, can you close us out, please, with your last concern? Yes, yes, just. My memory, I just forget stuff. Um, in June, the election. Um, what, this June coming up? No. This last the June? last election we had. We had a, a in November? Well, no, not November. Oh. The midterm. The, yeah. The, okay, you know, yeah. Yeah, the primary. primary right. Um, the Glenn Cunningham Library. People could not vote. Because the young exactly. men were on the was in steps, front, yes, yes, smoking weed, yes, and people were afraid to, to go, go in. in to vote. So, Officer Santos, please let your captain know. I'll bring it back up on Tuesday, but let him know that this is an issue that has to be taken care of before November. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, actually, June isn't June. Wait, what's no? This November. November. Okay. I'm so sick of elections. All right. I do want to thank um, everyone for tuning in, um, everyone for participating, everyone who came in um, person. Um, as always, we will try to remain as transparent and accessible as possible with respect to the ward and issues concerning the wards. Please continue to share the social media pages, to share the website, and there are a plethora of resources available for residents and all constituents. And with that being said, everyone get home safe and be great on purpose, good people. Um, oh, Miss... Yeah, he was going to give you a number to call to. But now that I'm thinking about it, somebody brought up a good point. They probably got good insurance on them bikes, so they ain't even looking for them. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> They're everywhere for the life of me. I can't understand. They have to know those bikes are going. You got two in your house. What'd you just say? Oh, I thought you said I got two of them in my house. I was about to say, what type of? No issues for Perkins today. Can everybody sign in on the sign-in sheet? Do we have all your information? Thank you. What's your name? Erica. What kids are walking home? Oh, walking to this from practice. Those are not recreation buses, you know that though, right? No, those are cultural fair buses. Same thing.
And then I, I don't know when we when I did my basketball program, we would transfer them kids home when they was coming out those gyms exactly. at eight o'clock at night. Exactly. Because if something happened and they coming from that gym, it's gonna be a big issue. Carolyn Jenkins. Uh, so there's Carolyn Jenkins, and it was Kershaw Harris. Oh God. Like, that's what, like, make those kids uh, sorry, Captain. Uh, 
Oh, directly, directly, directly. I don't, I'm so used to saying sergeant for some reason, because uh, my sister's in the military, so everybody's a sergeant. Like when it's time to leave, everyone has like to leave. We can't have okay. people wait until leave. Five, five, one, two, three, three, no, three, they're not going to stay here that long. We can get a whole group with us. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to CC you on this. What's your email address? And what time they normally okay. dismiss? 7.30. Oh, L.L. All right, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll right. we try to get a half an hour from 7.30 to 8. We can have a meeting. All right, meeting I'll CC you on that email. Okay. okay, thank you. Matter of fact, on Tuesday, that's that guy, that's that yeah. captain's yeah. Um, yeah. Captain. I'm going to try to come. We have a call. Got a call so hopefully we get that. Because we start at 4. Recording stopped. Oh, yeah, I know. That no, not the R1. That's what it is. They confusing people. It's the overlay. Yeah, the overlay. One right. is it's step one. Yeah, one is step two. Yeah, we gotta we gotta zoom meet tomorrow night with the overlay. Yeah, Wednesday. I'll be at that one. Okay. I'll be on um. Yeah, I'll be on that right now. Hi, Cap. I got hey, you the night. Cap. So back to winter coat. What's uh, up? Uh, How you doing? Good. Back to winter coat. Yeah, yeah back, back to winter coat. coat. For real. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was cold. Celebrate right the winter. Exactly. All in one jump. Right? <laughs> no ball. Oh, 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 my God. Yo, yesterday it was raining. Lincoln had a game. It was raining and cold. I said, Chris, I'm going to sit this one out, Chris. <laughs> Tell the kids, I love, I'm going to sit this one out, Chris. Oh, 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 Carolyn Jenkins. When, yesterday? Sunday. Oh, Sunday? It was so cold. And the sad part about it is that we got two playing now, so that means we got to sit through one game and then, and then another, another one. Game. You know what you do is when they leave out the house, you tap them on the helmet, pat them on the butt, tap them up, and good luck. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, we ain't talk nothing about the R1. Yeah, Damn it. I, I knew I was. I could have shouted out. Uh, yes, you but can. In my head, I was like, "What about R1?" I should have said like, I don't know. We were supposed to, we were supposed <coughs> to tease. It, it's what is it? Eight thirty? It's it's already two hours. We were supposed to tease the fact that we're having a walking tour. And they talked about it at the end. Did you see? Did you you heard them talking about it at the end, right? The yeah. R one and the overlay. Well, tomorrow's Morris Canal meeting, the overlay will be discussed, and I'm sure the R one too. Cool. Mm. Damn it. I'm also going to grab the lab for a few hours, guys. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Nah. You got his mic? Gilmore's mic? That's nice. You got Gilmore's mic from him? Mm -hmm. Okay.
Because he will go home. Yes, he will. The good thing is, we know where he lives. He, well, yo, he used to go home with the tax cans all the time. And we would have, like, recording. Where After he checked, he's like, oh, jeez. We record him saying whatever the hell he said. Everything. He's like, yo, we don't got, and we, if we don't have video for it, we don't use the audio. Like, like if the if it, do not you, have my permission to right, use anything. exactly if we, once we line it up on the um pluralize and the audio just goes on and on and on and there's no video like that's an obvious cue to just ignore all of that audio that has no video to go with it all right good stuff uh oh stop recording here Boop.